Hey guys, welcome to the 27th episode of the Learning Podcast. And if you're unsure, it's a Singaporean podcast dedicated to learning something new from every single guest on this show. And today I have a very big privilege to have Mitch on this podcast. Mitch, thanks so much for coming on this podcast. Thank you for having me, JJ. A little context of Mitch, right? He's from North Carolina. He's from the United States. He is a video creator with over 50 million views on you on Facebook. I was about to say YouTube, no. Um, so when it comes to video content creation, right, there's really a lot of things I believe that you can learn from this conversation. And Mitch is also currently a freelance videographer and an instructor at the NAS Daily Media Company, where he's an instructor at the NAS Academy, where they teach uh, people how to make videos to convey their message in a very simplistic manner. And right now, Mitch currently travels all over the world, right? So once in a while, he's in Singapore. So I knew that I really wanted to reach out to him to learn from him. And that's why I asked him on this podcast as well. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks, JJ. Mm. Other reasons, uh, Mitch himself made a lot of videos. He has traveled to like over 20 countries, Australia, Indonesia, Thailand, Mexico, Cuba, and many other countries. If you aren't following his page, please do go find it at Mitch Summers on Facebook. And there you can see a lot of videos. His most viral video is the world's most dangerous hotel where it itself just got over 28 million views, which I think is quite a fascinating thing. Like the, I, only a few hundred people watch this, but 28 million views is really crazy. So I know there's a lot of things that I want to learn from him in this aspect, like just his thought process on how he create videos and content creation in general. A couple of reasons why I think this podcast will be useful to listen to. Mitch himself is not traditionally uh, educator in the filmmaking space. He didn't come from a film school. In fact, he came from a tech and software background. So I think it's very interesting to see his transition from being in the tech and software background to doing this social media video content creation full time. He was there for about eight years. So I would imagine that there must been have some shift or influences the kind of thoughts that we was, he, he had before going into making videos for social media full time. So I think that int story is very interesting as well. And I just want to ask his general thoughts in terms of the influencers that he himself follows because I will regard him as an influencer as well. But I just want to see your thought process on who you respect in this field and perhaps your thoughts on what makes a good content creator in general. So, sure. yeah, oh, okay. wow, I know there's a, a lot. I know there's a, there's a, <laughs> just a very quick introduction. Yeah, Amish, you, for you. those listeners that don't know who, who you are, right, could yeah. you give a quick introduction about yourself? Sure. Well, you touched on many yeah. of the things. Um, I am not, and I don't like the term influencer. Why? But you are influencer. I, 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 I it, it makes me cringe mm. when I, you know, I don't go to Bali hotels and like to, you know, take a photo with, with my shirt off mm. and, and do that. <laughs> so that's, that's not my vibe. But uh, I, I think content creator is more, you know, we create content, uh, us, like me, and I'm lumping us all together. But uh, that has a message that there's some either entertainment or some value or something along those lines. That I like more than influence. If there's some influence that happens, sure, that's good. Um, but I am Mitch Summers. I'm from North Carolina, as you mentioned. Uh, I mean, do you want me to go into the full-on story? Or uh, a, sh a short story before we go all the way back. Okay. Yeah, before you go oh, okay. all the way back. Okay. Well, um, I, short story mm. as far as, like, I mean, I would have to go all the way back. Okay, okay. Let's, let's go all the way back, right? Can you just paint us a picture sure, when sure. you just graduated from university? Like, what do you study in university? Oh, okay. And, and how... Did you land up to where you are right now? I know there's like a big chunk in the middle, but yeah, just the, the top the, process. the beginning parts are boring. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so okay, let's go. Okay, okay college. Uh, you know, I, I I went to university after three years off. I took some time off. I waited tables, sold cars. I realized really quick that that's not really what I want to want to be for the rest of my life. Nothing wrong with it, but I wanted more. So I went to a business school, and I got accepted. It's amazing, and. You know, sat in the front of the class, got good grades, and life was good. Life was simple at that point. I got a job, and it was a business school with a concentration in information systems management, which is a mouthful. But essentially, it's enough tech to be dangerous. Like, a, not a programmer, de programming degree, or computer science degree, but just like, uh, you know, there were programming courses mixed with your business stuff. And graduated, got a job immediately. Thank goodness. That was great. And that was in 2011. So in 2011, started working and got a job at a startup, healthcare IT. And I, I went from uh, like product, an or sorry, 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 business analyst 
to implementation to I did many different things. It was a startup. Sold sold pro, sold software when I could. Um, that led me to do many different roles from that to working for a Fortune 6 company, a large healthcare company, and their innovative side. Uh, blockchain is where I finished things in 2017. So uh, we would build proof of concepts mm. for blockchain technology in the healthcare space. Pretty okay. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting to be the term innovative and a Fortune 6 company with 220,000 people. It, you know, it's siloed. It's hard to get. There's a lot of red tape. What well, was it very innovative in that sense of being in this? It company? was innovative, but uh, when you had the larger the company, in my experience, yeah. um, the harder it is to like, you know, get a proof of concept off the ground to, to build an in minimal viable product, an MVP. So because of that, you know, we would create these ideas and then they would get squashed. It's just the nature of a large company. There's no hate there. There's no animosity. Oh, it's just <laughs> objective, lah. Yeah, yeah, mm. just my observation. Mm. So um, we were working on blockchain stuff. Mm. We were trying to blockchain everything in 2017. I, I don't know if you, you know, that was like the buzzword of the year. Oh, yes, like. yes. When it peaked, right? Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bitcoin and Litecoin, and all, all this stuff. So um, at that point, that was where I transitioned out mm. of my corporate world. Mm. So uh, can it, you share, share with us the very start, the, the seed that was planted? So it, 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 it's quite specific. So, you know, you have holiday or vacation, you know, your two-ish weeks. I think I had like 15 days or 14 days. And so I booked a 10-day trip to the Dominican Republic. Mm. And this trip changed my life. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, my <laughs> mind-blowing trip. Mm. So I'm a planner. I was a product analyst planning, you know, agile sprints and working with the scrum master and blah, blah, blah. Like I was very, you know, detailed. I'm a detailed guy. And then it eventually, it, you know, I, I decided to not plan anything Oh, okay. on this trip. So I booked one Airbnb for one night in the Dominican Republic in 2017. So I went there. I met a guy from Venezuela. He showed me around. He told me a story of why he ran away from Venezuela, which made sense given all the corruption going on there, right? So he, and then he introduced me to people and that led me to go to the northern part of the island. The next thing you know, like I went on an unexpected journey of, I don't know, self-discovery, whatever you want to call it. So hung out with expats, met people, stayed in a jungle, rented a motorcycle and strapped my suitcase with a rubber tire on the back okay. and zipped around the, the island and then came back 10 days later and I, I, this is where I knew this was for me. I said, how can I do this full time? And I looked at what you can do remotely and I saw it as like, okay, I can do web design or web development remotely. I can, I can take photos, I can make videos. And I thought, I think I want to go in the video space. Was video something that you tried first or was it something that you tr no, tried amongst I, a lot I, of other as things? As a hobbyist, I would take photos on my, when I traveled. I lean towards adventure photography. I like it. Um, I'm not amazing at it, but I, I enjoy it. So I thought video, you know, photo maybe can only reach this many people, but video can reach a lot more. So that is why I started. I picked that. So I started geeking out and mm. I bought a camera that mm. I didn't know how to use and mm. I learned all the specs. Mm. And I knew all about 4K, 60, mm. 10 Which bit. camera do you first buy? GH5 was oh. my first real camera. Wow, that's yeah. a quite a high-end camera for a first camera. You know, you gotta go big, <laughs> Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I learned all about that and I made a huge mistake. Mm. The huge mistake was, is I didn't, uh, you know, at that point I knew I was going to do an exit. Yes. Right. I was mm. going to transition out. Mm. I'd made that plan. I started saving, um, but I didn't really make videos okay. before I left. So you left without... So I knew all about mm. bit rates and frame rates and shutter speeds and aperture and all these technical things. But did I actually make videos in North Carolina at home? No. Why? Why? I was busy. I don't know. I just... I, 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 there are a lot of things happening. You know, I got in the trap of looking up stuff on YouTube and watching and mm. not, not actually doing. Mm. And that's one huge lesson. That's that a lot of people like, fall into, right? A lot of people, a fall lot of people yeah. will watch. Me. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it's fun to learn, mm. but it's the best way to learn, I think, is to Do. doing. Mm. So that is... Uh, that was my big mistake. Mm. And from there, though, my, the right thing that I did 
was start saving money. Mm. So when I left, I saved like 40K, give or take, and that gave me comfort. So when I put in my notice, um, I could exit and know that I could go travel for a couple years Mm. without any income whatsoever. Mm. And that's exactly what I did. So I booked a one-way flight to the Philippines with a friend of mine who was going to help me film. Mm. He was had more experience in the whole... Uh, How do you meet him? Instagram. Oh, okay. You know. Is uh, he from North Carolina? No, well? he was from Argentina. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, great guy. We had connected a while back with the f- in the photo space. He knew my plan to travel, dr- quit my job and travel the world, which yeah. you've heard over and over yeah. and over again. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, he met me in the Philippines. We... Um, we started filming and realized that filming is very difficult and I should have learned prior. Mm. Um, and then something bad happened. Mm. Uh, he, he, his house burned down, like L- oh, in Argentina. Literally burned down. Like, oh, yes, there was a fire. Uh, long story short, that, uh, that stressed him out and financially that's a huge cost and expense and uh, I don't know if there was like insurance or anything. I'm not, I can't remember. But pretty much he had to, exit so he left and here i was in the philippines alone mm. and i didn't know how to make videos and i was quit my job to make videos oh, wow yeah. shit yeah then how, how do you move on from there um well i thought about quitting mm. and going back home i did not and i'm glad i didn't so that was the testament you know we we and there's a lesson there i think we learn when we're when we're forced to you know, because when it, I had a nice job and I was forced to learn, you know, it's not forced to learn. When I could learn on my own, like I didn't really take the initiative. But when I had to, when I was on the other side of the world and there was no choice, I did. Um, so I started uh, editing very bad videos over there, you know, like stop, start, record, learned Final Cut Pro, and which is the editing software I still use to this day. And um, I connected with someone else. I found someone that was better than me and had edited. He was a vlogger. And we met in Mauritius, which Mauritius is quite far from Philippines. And, yeah, we made six videos together. He taught me everything I I knew at that point. He taught me how to edit. He taught me how to shoot. So from there... uh, from there, I actually came back home. A family member had passed away, but I continued making videos after that. And that was like, I now had six videos under my belt that I had shot and helped edit, and I, I felt like I could do this on my own. And that's, that's where I did. So in North Carolina, back at home, you know, six months after I had left, here I was back. And I made, I, I was making videos. I mean, when looking back at your time at the Philippines, right, if, would you say that probably it's the best thing to do to force, to put yourself in a position to force yourself to learn in that sense? Or like looking back on hindsight, how would you have? I think, I think there's two schools of thought. Yeah. Because I, 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 and I, bo- I hit on both of these. One, mm. yes, I was a dummy. I should have learned like when I had the opportunity in the comfort of my home, why didn't I spend that time? And then two, when you have no choice, I think it depends on the type of person you are. Do you, do you, do you operate better under like where there's no other choice or are you okay with kind of self-starting and doing that thing? Mm. Sometimes I need a fire under my butt to make Mm. me go. So you're the kind of person that needs that fire under your butt. That that option two, school, school, that school of thought of forcing yourself to be left. You've heard of Tony Robbins say like, Mm. uh, burn the boats. Yes. Right. right. Like you don't go to a land to conquer another land back in the day when they would conquer lands and they pull up and it's like, you know, the captain's like, guys, all right, we're going to win. We're going to burn the boats. So yeah, I guess in a way, I mean, I didn't really have another, I could go back home with my tail between my legs or I could learn, and that's when I, my boat, boats were kind of burned at that point. So I wasn't going back home. <laughs> so in terms of the biggest lesson to, let's say, let's say someone like me, right, who, who wants to embark on this journey of, let's say, being a content creator, right, who doesn't know anything, right, what kind of, what, what, what the kind of first action things would you tell him or her in terms of starting this journey and being a content creator? I would encourage them to make videos. Mm. Like if it's, if it's videos that they're like that style, that type of content creation, I would, if I had 10 videos under my belt before I left, I would have been much more prepared like much better prepared. Like I didn't even know like 
final cut at all. Mm. You know, like I knew how to like, cut. I, knew, I open, I could cut, mm. I could drag something on the timeline, mm. but really that's it. Mm. So, uh, I should have made a video about nothing, like just mm. something at home mm. just for practice. Mm. And you know, that's exactly what we're teaching today and in, mm. in the Academy mm. is we're making videos about ourselves, and we're making videos that, you know, that, that don't really have a huge purpose ex mm. other than to, to show you to fail and to make a better video because mm. it'll take a hundred more mm. videos before you get better. And so at which point did you meet Nas and sure, how did sure. he play a role Ex in what you are doing right now? So it's important to say that at that point, if you go back to, it goes Philippines, March. don't know how to make videos, friendlies, right? I have to learn how to make videos. I try, I stop and start and they're really bad. Go to Mauritius with a, a, another friend, Felix. Felix teach, it teaches me kind of how to vlog that style. I realize vlogging is not my thing. So I'm like, how can I keep doing this? So I pivot yet again. Pivot, pivots are key. Yeah. <laughs> pivot. Um, and then I go back home mm. because family member passes away, mm. go to the funeral, and, but I want to keep making videos. So I mm. make videos, but I realize today I'm eating pizza, I'm vlogging. Mm. It's not really my vibe. Mm. I, I don't want the stories to be about me. Mm. Uh, my life's not that interesting. No, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't really, I want to make stories about other people, places, and things. And that's what I had an interest in. So that's right around the time where I really discovered uh, Nas Daily, so who was a, a very successful video creator on Facebook, and then uh, a few others like Project Nightfall, uh, and there's a handful of other people on the Facebook space that made more scripted content that was about a specific topic. I liked that, so by I, I, I emulated, I I tried doing what they were doing, and I made really bad scripted videos in North Carolina, then went to Canada. Um, my grandmother was 95 years old. I thought, my uncle just passed away. Life is short. Let me go here. See family. Family's important. So I, I, I made a video about her and her story, and then I made a video about the highest tides in the world, the Bay of Fundy. Tides change five stories. That's pretty crazy. So I make that with my cousin, and the video does really well for my standards with a very small page. And I think it's like at 400 and something K views mm. from like back then, which is insane. Did, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. And then that's where actually Nas himself sees this video and it's, it kind of changed my life. I mean, he saw that, said, wow, great job, like your video. So we linked up later and ended up traveling around Canada, making videos. I learned a lot. He became a mentor and a friend and together this, to this day, we still work together and now I'm teaching, you know, other video creators about video making. So that was uh, a year and a half to two years ago, uh, where we were in Canada making videos together. Mm. So. so like, so f like in terms of let's say fast forward or or the time towards here, right? Yeah. How, like how how much a working relationship right now with Nas, or at least what are the kind of we would say biggest macro lessons that you learned from Nas himself in terms of like making content creation and sure. perhaps it's sometimes some content tips that you could give in terms of making videos. Uh, sure. So uh, obviously he, he is the king of consistency. Mm. Like uh, during the 1000 day journey, he made, mm. you know, a video every yeah. day. Mm. That's uh, that's a surefire way. If you can do something every day, mm. uh, you get better. So he got better. He got much better, and he got built an audience. He his his stories got better. His editing got better. You know the people he surrounded himself with as well got better. Uh, they it, that that is the big thing, like the consistency of doing something every day. Now, does that mean for me? I never was. I, I was not interested in everyday videos because I was. Uh, I like to make them a little bit longer. You know, I wasn't doing the one minute thing. Uh, and he's not now either. He's doing weekly. But he's also started a company. So, so it's not that he's not busy. But I was doing, you know, videos on bigger stories that I would have to typically fly to and chase like this hotel in the ocean. It took weeks of prep to get 
to where I could get access to this and go out there on this lighthouse tower in the middle of the ocean kind of thing or floating mansions or fly to Mexico and meet entrepreneurs and, and tell their story. So um, I, I learned that I don't have to do something every single day, like release something that's, here's this video. But if I work every day towards the video, like even if it's a few hours, whether it be editing, pre-production, scripting, shooting, long as there's, I'm doing something every day that's in my realm, which is video making, content creation, that will take me far. So you don't have to, because I, I think people see that and say that's unobtainable. Like I can, no way I could release a video every day. And I get that. And maybe that's unhealthy for many people. But for me, if I just every day think, what am I going to do today to take me towards? So I'm going to do something video related, whether that's researching a new video for the future or something every day. And it's the everyday stuff that'll take you. It's a small baby steps along the way. Correct, correct. When it comes to choosing a topic for a video, right? You talked about licensing for entrepreneurs. Like, how do you even reach out to all these people? Like, like what's the thought process? Like, when it comes to choosing to make a particular video? It's, it's, it's funny how it's getting, it gets easier with time. Um, first, is, I'll ask people. I, I do, I do I, there's many methods, but one of which I love to crowdsource ideas. So when I was in North Carolina, I asked on Facebook, my friends, I said, hey guys, what's interesting here? Uh, I want to make a, some videos while I'm here. And the tower was mentioned, frying pan tower. It's off the coast. This, so I go to Facebook. I do some stalking. I find the owner. I, I send him messages. I ask my Facebook friends to send him, in, say, hey, I really want to make this video. If we want to make this happen, we got to get his attention. Yes. Anyone has a few minutes, can you email him and tell him that I'd like to make the video? Okay. So five people did out of my friends. Mm. And then between that, my email, my phone call, my direct message to his Facebook and five emails in his inbox, he responds mm. and says, wow, you're pretty persistent, aren't you? Mm. And I said, yeah, politely persistent, mm. I hope. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it got his attention and showed a demand already. So I've done that technique a, a few times. But a lot of times I can just directly reach out. So if I find a person, place, or, or thing, I can say, hi, I'm Mitch. I can qualify myself. I'm Mitch. I, I've had X amount of views, whatever time that was. Mm. If it's worthwhile to note. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it's not, then I didn't mention it in the beginning. Mm. Hi, I'm Mitch. I make videos, and I'd love to tell your story and help it. What's, what's, the, what's the value proposition for them, right? Like, uh, I, I want to... Share your message with the world on why you're doing this or this, and people will find that interesting. And usually it works. So um, wherever I go, I look up interesting ideas or I ask people, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, that's a great way. Then I reach out, and then hopefully I can close a deal. It's a little bit of business development going on, you know, interpersonal skills, you know, whatever you want to call it. But, um, and usually people are pretty percep uh, perceptive to, they're, they're keen to do it, mm. which is great. Cool. When, when it comes to, let's say, of all the videos that you have made, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's anyone watching this, right, is there one video that you want viewers to watch in terms of you feel that this is the, this is the video that I'm the most proudest of? Um, I, oh, it's a little difficult to it, choose, it, it, it? It's difficult because each one is like a baby, you know? Um, you know, you've taken an idea out of nothing and then turned it into something. And, and for me, like, I want to pause and reiterate that. The, the best thing about creating content is, is that you can take something. Like a startup, you take an idea and you build a product or a software, right, that, that can help solve a problem. I think it's very similar, because I came from that space. It's very similar to how we can take an idea about you know, sharing this story and make it your way and frame it in your way and reach m potentially millions of people and create it out of nothing. That's great. So it's, it's amazing. So sorry, that was a sidetrack. Yeah. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> of all the videos oh, all that the you videos. have made, right? Um, which, 
makes me uh, like I love a lot of the the stories and the people that I get to meet are the most important. I would say, I would say, Frying Pan Tower is definitely probably one of the most special ones because it's the most unique. Um, it's a tower, thirty four miles off the coast of North Carolina, that a guy bought for eighty five thousand dollars when the Coast Guard sold it. Why did they sell it? They sold it because it's in shallow areas, and that's why they ships would crash out there, so they put a lighthouse in the ocean, way out there, which is kind of strange in and of itself. But because of GPS now, boats know to go around. They go around the shoals, the shallow areas. So he essentially bought this guy that was in software, in tech himself, this normal guy, you know, makes just an ordinary guy, takes $85,000 and buys essentially a tree house in the middle of the ocean and like a kid and he turns it into this playground so it's there are sharks surrounding it hurricanes hit it all the time they have a webcam where you can watch the hurricanes as they come by so the, you can you can hit biodegradable golf balls in the ocean you can you know you can drink if you you're into that you can play games you can you, you, there's a unicycle on there. there so there's all these fun things you can do the stars are beautiful at night out there so it's just a truly unique experience and this human story of why this guy bought that was very interesting so and that's just one of the many stories and uh, yeah now we're friends today which is cool Okay, moving on, right, in yeah. terms of content creation for videographers, right, what, like, I know this probably is a little bit repetitive, right, but in terms of tips that you could give someone in terms of video content creation, mm-hmm. what should they look out for? Or what, do you, okay, what are the biggest mistakes do you see, let's say, young content creators making? Um, in your perspective, I know it's, like, subjective and relative, I think but what trying- you feel that most people, most mistakes are that, I, I think trying to be perfect. I struggle with trying to be perfect, and that slowed down my creation process. So, um, because the first hundred videos are probably bad, right, or fifty or so. Like you may have a few good ones in there. Um, trying to, I would chase sometimes that perfect shot, which would add like a, a day. Like, oh, I need this one shot here for two seconds in the video, and it would. I would spend a whole day of my time getting that shot. And that's great if you have the time and the budget, but it, it just delays things. So uh, I, I, quality quanti- or quantity? Quantity in the beginning so you can learn. Mm. Worry about quality will come over time naturally. I was very much a perfectionist. So that's, that slowed me down trying to pick the best story and the best script and get the best shots. And I could have twice as many videos if I would have gotten rid of that in the beginning. Mm. So in your perspective, right, what makes a good content creator? Um, I think, I think a content creator just needs to have a message that they're passionate about. So I don't want to make, tell stories that I'm not interested in. And that's why I chose the style that I do. I found it through trying different things. I tried vlogging. I didn't like it. I tried scripted videos, and then I could kind of control the narrative to a degree. Like, I'm not pushing my agenda with these scripts or these stories. I tell the story the way it is, but I try to shorten it and condense it so it's digestible for people. Good content creator is someone that does like they figure out the type of content that they enjoy and they like and they make that content. So whether it be inspirational or motivational, it be the coolest things around the world or it be, you know, sports or fitness or whatever you whatever you're keen to uh, do, it's not just about making content, it's about making content that you're passionate about. And I think the same goes for even going flashing back to my tech side. I'd rather m- participate in a startup that was something I'm interested in what the product will do when it's finished than to just be in the tech space. Coding is great, but coding something you're passionate about will take you. Same thing with making a video. If you're passionate about the story and passionate about the video you're going to end up releasing, then that will help because, you know, videos make you cry 
while you're making them. A lot of times, there's a lot of stress involved. <laughs> uh, some of my friends tell me, right, when they meet social media celebrities, at least for in Singapore, that the persona that they put online and yeah. offline are very different things, and sometimes it baffles them. Yeah. So I personally have such experience as well, whereby I meet this content creator, like not to say that they are like entirely different but the values that they stand for sometimes are not what they preach in their videos at times so okay. sometimes it makes me confused like do you really create things that are pandering to the audience or something that is what you truly believe in ah. so in terms of your opinion on this online and offline persona where do you stand on this and your sure thoughts so on it? i'll speak with my uh, for myself for for one thing if you watch my videos i'm actually on camera very little so I really think it's hard for you to judge who I am as a person. Like this conversation, if people have watched my videos and are watching this, they've never heard me speak this much in their entire life, yes, right? Yes. Because I say a line in the beginning, maybe in the middle, maybe at the end, you know, I'm on camera, what, 30 you seconds? You give them very little material to, I, for them to fo form a perception of you. Correct. Because I, if I were vlogging, that may be different, right? But I'm not going around showing like, oh, how, how either funny or how serious or how intellectual. Like I'm essentially narrating a story. I'm doing the voiceover. But so there's there's... That, that actually is a con to the style of videos that it, it's hard for the audience to really get to know me. They probably get to know that I like things like these stories that I'm making, frying pan towers, you know, uh, people who create innovative products. I make videos about that. Uh, the biggest or best, coolest things in the world, people probably think that I like that stuff. People would probably make an assumption that I, I'm adventurous. They would be right just by the type of stories I tell. Um, so... They could judge me by that, but I feel like if I ran into someone, you would, if you ran into me just by seeing those videos, you would have a hard time saying, well, am I a nice guy or am I a jerk? Uh, that said, other content creators, if they are on camera more, I think that we tend to, as human nature, when we watch them, we, we assume that how their presence is on there on, on the video is how they are in real life. And, and I think that there can be a disconnect. I'm sure, I, I think I've run into people where that's a disconnect, but I've also run into many people where they believe in what they're saying. So mm. hopefully that answers mm. your question. Mm. <laughs> I, okay, that, 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 that's interesting. For yourself, do you feel that, uh, let's say when it comes to con creating content that talks about showing more of your, of your personality. Mm -hmm. Is that a content direction that you'll be interested in venturing into? Y yes. Mm. Um, I think I think that it's something that I'm missing, to be honest. I, I, I do want people to get to know me, not in a sense so I can have fame and more, more likes, followers, views, that sort of thing, but just just because at the end of the day, people watch things for a human element, right? Like I, oh, that, and they do, they like the person or they enjoy the way they tell this story. So that is one thing, like I, I've done very little, little segments here and there where you can maybe get to know me a little bit. Uh, and I want to do more of that in the future. So perhaps I should have done this earlier, but. Uh, so on the I'm note learning. of the future, right? Like what's your future plans in terms of the content that you want to create. Sure. So traveling to the hotels in the ocean and, and floating mansions in Miami and going to find guys that create vegan leather out of cactus in Mexico, all these stories are insane and they're incredible. Um, but it's very, it's not scalable. So I have made several videos that are, I call not travel, they're not travel related at all. Things I'm interested in, things that aren't just cool things or people, places, things. They're actually uh, like life hacks or things like that. So I have made videos like that and I've made them from my home in North Carolina. So I want to make more content that is stuff like it's essentially the books I read and the pe blogs and the podcasts that, that I consume. I want to tell stories that are in alignment with that, that aren't just travel related. So that's what I'll be doing. And I've done a few and I'll be doing more of those in the future that will allow me to create more content more often. And I won't get burned out chasing, flying from this place to this place every single time mm. because you know, living out of a suitcase is, mm. 
is so actually strange. I do you have a permanent place that you're based in for now or you mostly you're just traveling all around I travel 50 to 70 percent of the time mm. um so I I call North Carolina home base mm. but I wouldn't even say that's home mm. because I'm on the road so much on the note of let's say the content that you absorb as a content creator yourself yeah. right could you share like some what, what kind of content do you absorb whether it's through podcasts YouTube what kind of uh content creators that inspires you in that sense sure so um i'll do podcasts first uh tim ferris for for sure he's the huge he's a huge inspiration on uh just the podcast space and and i read the four hour work week you know a long long time ago and the guess he has how he dissects what their routines are i like that and i think you'll see that i'm some of my non-travel related content that i i get a lot of inspiration from those types of life hacks, self-experimenting, that sort of thing. So then um, on YouTube, Casey Neistat was like the OG vlogger guy mm. that inspired me and mm. just seemed like a really cool guy. So I always uh, have watched him, Peter McKinnon. Um, there's a few others from the, the like cinematography, geeky, like you know, unboxing that sort of space, mm. but I don't do those that those types of videos. Mm. And then on Facebook, obviously, like uh, Nas Daily, Project Nightfall, mm. Deerlean, uh, Franco. Mm. Uh, just, just I, I'm I'm missing a few, but the, it's a small it's a smaller community on Facebook mm. doing more scripted content. Mm. So these people have been huge inspirations for mm. me, and we've kind of been in a support group. Mm. So I look up to them and their styles. From your perspective, let's say on Facebook, right? You yeah. only mostly make videos on Facebook. Could you maybe share the differences between, let's say, a YouTube video and yeah. a Facebook video? Like, how do you go about, let's say, creating videos for these platforms? Sure. So you have to think of the user experience. Mm. So for Facebook, what is the user doing? F scrolling through the feed. They're scrolling. Mm. So my job is to distract you from mm. looking at your friend's cat, cat picture. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm. and to take 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 you away from that, so I need to get straight to the point, and you know, thumb stop, create thumb stopping content. So Facebook, you got to go straight to the point. You got to assume the user scrolling, and you wanna you don't want to start out with long cinematic drone shots, and that this that doesn't work. I've done that uh, it, and failed. So I made a, a Cuba story about a guy that was. Great story, but I started out with some cinematics. It didn't work. Failed. So, um, yeah, that approach is very different on YouTube. So I think the the length of your content, uh, Facebook likes scripted videos more often than like a vlog uh, because the user is scrolling. It's a, uh, YouTube is a sit back experience, like where I like sit back, like more like Netflix. Like we go there to consume content, to consume and watch videos. Whereas Facebook, I'm looking at my friend's feed and I need to distract you. That's why the watch time you'll find is lower on Facebook than YouTube. But you can also, there's, there's pros and cons to both, but you can reach a whole lot more people on Facebook because of the share button is, there's a share button on YouTube, but it kind of copies a link and then I paste the link and then it's it, not intuitive. It, right. But if you have a thousand friends on Facebook and you share my video, I can potentially now reach your friends. Not all 1,000, but more, and they don't even f like follow my page. That's, that's incredible. So now they can watch my thing, and if they share their video, you can see it can go viral. So there's no way. I think my page had 50,000 followers when I, the Frank Pan Tower st came out, somewhere in there, give or take, right? And there's no way with 50,000 you could get 20 million, million, 28 million views on yeah. YouTube with 50,000 mm. subscribers. Mm. On Facebook though, that's very possible. Mm. It is possible. When it comes to the back end, let's say that I know yeah. there's a lot of talk of like macro planning of content, shooting yeah. videos, right? But in terms of using analytics, right? I'm a media mm. analyst, right? I like numbers, right? Yeah. How did you, what kind of metrics would, would you say would you rely on or look at to see or know whether this is a good video or not? Watch time. Just watch time, average okay. watch time. So yes, um, I shares and watch time. Mm. Uh, shares are important, but watch time, some videos aren't shareable. Mm. Um, what, some videos are not shareable? Give like, you an example. A mm. um, friend of mine, Aegon, with Pro Project Nightfall. Yeah. So he works closely with Nas, uh, and they, they um, 
he made a video mm. recently about the truth about porn addiction. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, I am not sharing that video, but I watched it. Mm. I watched it all. Mm. So, whereas if, you know, this guy, Nas made a video about this guy cleaned a lake with his, with this, uh, it was his most viral video, like yes. 140 million views or yeah, something like that, it. something insane. And, you know, you're like, wow, share, share, share. You know, it's cool. It's cool. It's interesting. So, I'm not going to share a porn video even if it resonates, I'm going to share this this cool, biggest, best thing that I find very interesting. You, sh- you share with my content friends. that you resonate with, that you f- identify with, of part of your identity. Right. As long as it won't hurt your reputation. So mm. if someone, a lot of people aren't going to share the porn video because they're like, "Oh, my grandma's going to see that I shared this," you know, or my friends or whoever. Right. So I think that's so that's where watch time is very important. Watch time is. Uh, is huge so I can look at videos that have poor watch time and they can be highly shared but you know I'm like why wasn't the watch time good what can I do differently and usually it's about getting to the point faster in the beginning hooking you in and then yeah it's it's interesting where YouTube you don't have to do that as much Mm. watch time is much better on YouTube so the biggest lesson, in a sense, is that the, f- the audience retention in the first five to eight seconds is the most important for Absolutely. Facebook. Absolutely. I think there's something uh, where the attention span is like eight seconds. So if you can't stop someone in that, I, I, don't quote me on that. But it makes sense, right? Because we're, we're being, we get pinged all the time with every notification, uh, you know, and there's a billion social medias out there and emails and texts and notifications. It's just, our brain is just, it, it, so much is coming at yeah. us so we we block it we can't absorb it all mm. you know so so people have a very short attention span now okay speaking of attention span i mitch uh, ending of this podcast yeah, right? i know this yeah, is okay. a rather long one for you in terms of content right uh some quick fire questions right? sure, sure, sure. in terms of the best advice right have you ever received whether it's in the content creation side or whether it's in tech and industry side what is the best advice have you received ah uh Create more content. Uh, do I, I said this earlier? Mm. I'll reiterate. Yeah. Create more videos. If you're wanting to get in the video space, make a lot of videos. Mm. Don't worry about perfection. Go out there and make videos about your house. About, uh, learn how to tell a story about something boring. If I can make a story about this cup, I'm going to learn how to shoot better. Mm. Right? Um, uh, I'm going to learn how to script better. Mm. If you're on Facebook, you're going to be more scripted than YouTube. Mm. So, uh, yeah, you become essentially a better writer when you're writing better scripts mm. too. So the, the, the quantity, get more out and then worry about perfection later. In terms of the worst advice have you ever received? What is the worst advice the have you ever received? The worst advice? Wow. Uh, okay. I will say that I don't, when I get advice, or if I get advice, I look at the human or the person. Tell them, of course, they're all humans. I look at the person. <laughs> I look at the person um, who's giving me the advice. Yes. Do they have what I want? Mm. So, for example, if someone's telling me how to invest in stocks, mm. if I if let me see their portfolio, mm. then I'll listen to them. Mm. So, listen the be, the if people are giving me advice and they're not at the place I want to be. Mm. Like I want Nas Daily. I want Aegon, Project Nightfall, giving me advice on video making. Mm. I don't want someone who just got a camera and mm. is real cocky and went to film school mm. because I don't think you need to go to film school mm. to, to make good videos. Mm. So that is, I would turn away from those people. Mm. One year from now, right, if it was the best year for your life, mm-hmm. what tangible events do you want to happen to make it the best year ever? Ah, what tangible events I so when I left I made zero dollars my first year Mm. last year so I'm now on on my just after year two Mm. so last year Mm. 2019 I actually made money Mm. I'd almost I got close to my old salary Mm. in tech which is amazing one year of just spending my money and then next year making money. So this year I want to, I, I, it's not that money is everything, mm. but I also, I want to earn more than what I made last year. That's like a tangible goal. Like mm. I can do that mm. um, because it, it will allow me to chase bigger stories mm. that 
can cost more money to do because I, I don't want money to be an issue for telling a story. If your story is worthwhile and I need to fly over to across the, the world to go chase it, mm. I want to chase that story. I don't want to say, uh, that's, that's a thousand dollar flight. Mm. I don't care. Mm. I want to go chase it. Mm. So th that said, I want to, to get those bigger stories. I need to earn more income. Mm. And as I earn more income, I can tell better stories. Mm. So. Okay, thanks, Mitch. Thanks so much for joining me on this podcast. Right, I know Thank I'm like you. over the place, but I think I <laughs> hope this conversation would it really be great. helpful to someone out there who's really interested in picking up videography. Like I've learned so much from you in terms of let's say don't be a perfectionist, just starting. Right, if there's anyone who aside from please do give uh, Mitch a like, comment, subscribe on his page, Mitch Summers. Right, but if there's anyone who's interested in reaching out to you, right, how can they reach out to you? Um, Facebook, you, Mitch Summers, mm. the video creator one guy mm. that you'll see. Mm. Uh, you can send me a message there or Instagram at Mitch underscore underscore mm. Summers. So uh, I'll be leaving the, those links in the yeah, video perfect, description perfect. as well. And yeah, thanks so much, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you.